um, nations. So my name is Joni Taylor, and I'm the coordinator of student recruitment. Um, I would like to say a special hello to our viewers at home. We, as they're in one of those cameras up there somewhere. So hi, everyone. <laughs> we don't see you, <laughs> but hello. We're glad you're here. Um, um, so I just wanted to welcome you all here tonight and uh, congratulate you on your successful applications. Um, we understand that you probably have some questions um, before accepting your offers, and so we set up this event so that you could hopefully um, get some of those questions answered. So I'm not alone. I have, we have a wonderful team of Emily Carr community with us tonight, so I'd like to introduce some of those to you. First of all, we have some students with us. So I have Stephanie Broder here. If you want to stand up and give a, a wave, you're, you're, if you're comfortable with that. Stephanie is a fourth year illustration major. Uh, we have Sarah Crivelli. Where are you, Sarah? Oh, maybe she's outside. Maybe I should wait the students to the end. Are they outside still? OK. OK. <laughs> I'm going to save them to the end. They might be outside. So let's go to our Aboriginal gathering place. We have Michelle Sound. Here's Michelle, and with her assisting her is Zoe Siri. Zoe is a fourth year visual arts student, and she's graduating. Congratulations. Um, from records and registration, academic and academic advising, we have Denise Cordray. Oh, maybe she's outside too. Oh, you know what? Denise and Sharice are upstairs. I'll introduce you when they come back down. Um, our academic advisors, we have Danielle, just you, okay. So this is Danielle Zandvliet. Um, let's see, and now from our admissions team, we have Kevin Bird. Kevin is our executive director, student services and registrar. Uh, sitting next to him is Kurt Stravrow. Um, Kurt is the executive assistant to the executive director, student services registrar. <laughs> Okay, we have April Joy Milne. Okay, you can definitely wave harder than that. There we go, there's April Joy Milne. April Joy is the um, Exchange and International Programs Advisor. Otilia Spantulescu is the International Student Advisor. Yvonne Hachkowski over there in the doorway is our um, Admissions Advisor. Laura Evely. Is Laura still outside? Laura was the one at the uh, welcoming you at the table out there. She's still outside. She's our admissions assistant. Um, and then our housing assistant, Robin, was unable to make it tonight, but uh, we will have some housing information for you uh, at the admissions table in the booths later. Okay, let's see. We have Jeff Malik from the Career and Professional, there he is in the doorway, from our Career and Professional Development Office. And then from our Counseling, Accessibility, and Wellness office, we have Joanne Elliott. There's Joanne. She is our Student Resource Coordinator. Johnny Liu is a registered clinical counselor here at Emily Carr. Um, I'd also like to introduce, yes, there she is, <laughs> introduce you to, uh, from our Academic uh, Affairs office, is Dr. Sissy Fu. Uh, Dr. Sissy is the Dean of Faculty of Culture and Community. Um, and joining her are two of our faculty. We have right here, Dion Akiati. She is uh, an Assistant Dean, Decolonial Methodologies, Foundation Faculty of Culture and Community. Uh, Martin Rose, I did see you, there he is. Martin Rose is another Associate Professor, Animation and Foundation Programs. Um, and then from our financial aid and awards offices, Sarah, there we go, there's Sarah McLaren over there in the corner beside Sissy. She is a financial aid and awards advisor. And I guess Sharice is still upstairs, okay. So um, thank you all for, yes. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Avalon. So we have Avalon Mott here. Avalon Mott is the director of Sorry, I do have you down here. Sorry, there's Avalon. <laughs> she is the Director of Recruitment, Admissions, and International Development. Is there anyone else I missed? I, I'm sorry about that. I don't know how I, I missed that. Yes, 
Oh, good. Here we go. Okay, so we have a couple more of our students here. So this is Janani Ramesh. Janani is a third year interaction design major. And then Lemon, did I, in, I didn't introduce you yet, so. Okay, so we have from the Students' Union Office, Lemon Reimer, Chairperson and Representative for the Faculty of Culture and Community. Correct? Okay, good. Nick, I missed you. Nick Mann is a foundation student, and Nick is uh, just completing his foundation year and is going into uh, visual arts in the fall. Uh, and here's Denise Cordray. Denise is the, okay, now I have to go to my notes again for this one. Denise is the Director of Records, Registration, and Advising. Thanks, Denise. And Sharice, oh, there she is. Okay, Sharice snuck in, so she's up at the top there. Those of you at home won't be able to see her, but trust us, she's there. Sharice uh, Bryan is the, I'm gonna have to look up your title here, sorry. You're on the other page. There we go, perfect, she knows it best. Okay, so the Associate Registrar Awards and Advising. Okay, anyone else I missed? Okay, we're good. All right, so what we're going to do now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome to our stage uh, Dr. Sissy Fu, who will tell you a little bit about uh, our foundation's program. It's always good to hear energy and actually for any call, a response. This is the kind of way in which an Emily Carr University of Art and Design education would actually get you, prospective students, incoming students, and of course the family who support and learn alongside and with you as you go through your four-year journey here at Emily Carr. Why is it important to actually have a response to every call? Because every response is also a call for something else. Um, what some of our faculty this year in foundation in the first year program has uh, been faced with are students who are well-informed, engaged politically, socially, wanting to make a change into the world, but overwhelmed with the kind of news that we hear every day, the devastation of the climate, the way in which human beings treat each other. They come into a studio classroom, into a critical studies classroom, and ask a very, very relevant question. What can I do? And beyond that, why does what I do, what I make, and what I care about actually matter? This is how. Can we read this? What does it say? I will not make any more boring art. This is a piece that is actually delegated um, through prompts of uh, an American, nor US American uh, conceptual artist in the 1970s, somebody by the name of John Baldessari. He's a conceptual artist, wants to change the rules of what it means to be an art maker. So through writing, a type of way in which we practice certain rules, so think of grammar, think of syntax, punctuation, the ways that we need to capitalize certain things, etc. And how do we actually, in the confines of art making, within an educational institution, actually bend those rules? So what you see here is actually a prompt, um, an instruction that uh, was sent to students at uh, Nova Scotia in order to enact a piece together on uh, the wall of a university. The rule is, the instruction is, please write, I will not make any more boring art. Ad infinitum, ad nauseum, on a wall. And this is what the students did. Exactly what was asked. And this is actually a print um, that the artist didn't ask for that was made of uh, this collective, continuous, durational endeavor. This is an interesting case that I like to bring up because what is it that an art and 
design education does that on the one hand attunes us to the ways in which we need to learn through instruction, but how do we break, three, break free from these instructions as well and start making our own rules or start pushing the boundaries of what is meaningful for each and every single one of you so that you start developing your own practice in a contextual situation which you understand the history, the theory, and the cultural context of why it is important to make, not just things, but also to make things happen, and also to make things happen together. And that's why there are studios and classrooms, ecologies of practices where you are going to meet your best enemy and your best friends, the people that you can talk to into the wee hours of the morning about something that matters to both of you, or work silently next to each other, collaborating on projects, because you appreciate each other's background, experience, and affinities. So how do we change the rules? The foundation year, so year one of your education at Emily Carr, is housed in the Faculty of Culture and Community. And uh, therefore, as Dean, I have the privilege of standing here speaking with you for uh, a few minutes about what that means. You might ask, uh, what does a faculty of culture and community do? It seems like it's everything. Whereas uh, if we're talking about a faculty of art or a faculty of design and dynamic media, it's quite clear these are practices that could be isolated, that could be recognized right away as a type of practice that leads to a particular career, a certain set of skills and expectations that you might already know from things, um, artifacts, systems that we already see in the world. So you go to architecture school because you want to go into the profession of an architect. The faculty of culture and community, what I'd like to think of it as, is the creation of cultures of co-mutiny. We might know the word mutiny from Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Um, when a set of um, sailors come together and decide to overthrow the leadership um, of uh, the first mate, the captain. Um, how it's interesting is that uh, on the one hand, we're thinking about mutiny as mutation, as change. But really, if we go back to the Latin root of mutiny, it really just means movement. What does it mean to move together? Move together to change systems, change the way that we can think out, or out of problems, think outside of the box, address issues that seem way too big for one person or a small group of experts to be able to solve. When we look at uh, the resonance of social movements around the world, and that includes artistic movements, um, the ways in which the, the patterns of how we understand, see, and frame the world moves. This is at the root of art and design education. But it's not just one way. There are multiple ways through multiple traditions, multiple historical contexts. The appreciation of cultures and the pre appreciation of difference and an understanding that it's always political, not in a scary governmental bureaucratic way, not necessarily at any rate, but rather that as we stand up and express ourselves, when we find our voice and speak it in different ways, whether through painting, through animation, through sculpture, through printmaking, these are the different cultures that we afford at Emily Carr. I'd like to introduce a project um, that exemplifies uh, this kind of cultures of community, if you will. Um, this is a project uh, that a few students uh, who are wanting to address uh, waste management on campus and also uh, waste making, if you will, um, as an ecological sustainability intervention um, actually came together 
um, and with a faculty supervisor, decided to make an exhibition of it. So this is an exhibition that took place um, this uh, past February and June called Let's Talk About Waste. Three students from three different uh, majors, so I believe it's interaction design, uh, sculpture, and critical and cultural practices came together um, and started doing an institutional audit, if you will, um, in partnership with our cafeteria um, to really address the ways in which we create waste. Um, on campus. Those of us who have been listening to the news uh, would have heard on CBC quite recently a lot of conversation about how much waste Canada as a country actually produces and how we also as a country tend to ship out these waste to parts of the world that we don't feel as close um, a responsibility for but that these other countries are resisting the ways in which we are delegating that labour and also the kind of devastation that comes with it. So this is a very socially engaged piece that happened on campus, where uh, students, staff, faculty came together to address an issue that is local, but also with global resonance. Um, there are artworks um, using the waste, so uh, that has been discarded um, in the cafeteria in the first instance. Um, made into abstract pieces of art. There are ways in which um, students are returning to the idea um, of how not um, to create waste, um, paper cups, etc., cetera, um, by having a mug wall and making it a part of an exhibition. There are initiatives around the university, and this is one um, from communication design, where recycled paper is actually bound um, in a different way and for another lease of life. And the very colorful and dynamic ways in which this uh, stationary project um, actually allows for professional development for students, to be sure, um, but also ways in which we can engage in equipment and technologies within the university. So how does this all come together in foundation year? This is what the curriculum looks like in year one at Emily Carr. In the first semester and the second semester, uh, there is an academic core that gives us um, a shared basis of visual culture, material culture, with art history, design history, media history, as well as histories of the land, indigenization, and the ways in which decolonizing knowledge and education is at the very, very core of what art and design can do. So the way that uh, we are then starting to practice asking questions become important. And it starts a journey of what an undergraduate research-led practice might become. Alongside that, um, we have interdisciplinary core studio um, in the first semester to accl acclimatize all of us um, from 2D to 3D to 4D um, practices. And each course um, is led uh, by a subject expert that will have their own practice um, in a particular area. But uh, this teaching team is built in order to be able to speak from two-dimensional to three-dimensional to time-based works. Um, this is in order then to allow us um, to have a more informed idea of which core studio we would want to enter into in the second semester, where there's a choice between visual arts, design, and media. In the first semester, there's also a very unique course that only Emily Carr offers um, called Creative Processes. Everything is a creative process at Emily Carr, but how do we actually understand the value of that? How do we take the time to really appreciate what imagination and creativity can do? And it might not surprise us that failure is a part of it a part of any learning experience, that at the point when we don't fear failure and we see it as a way in which we could return to the same concept, make a variation, and try again, is exactly what artistic and designerly practice allows us to do. And it gives us a kind of transferable skill that builds reflection and resilience as we encounter complexities in the world. And finally, in the second semester, um, students also get a chance um, to try your hands at something more specific, 
perhaps more technical. So these are courses that range from drawing for those of us um, who want to continue to hone that, um, to access to the ceramic studio for different kinds of firings, an introduction to printmaking, um, animation, illustration, etc. What supports our foundation program is also a foundation forum where every week during lunchtime there will be a meeting of the entire foundation class of 350 of you. It will be packed. Our foundation program coordinator will have set up a series of interesting interventions, if you will. So from the way in which uh, you are introduced uh, to um, what is understood as the art scene in Vancouver, and also the margins of it, and the ways in which, say, community engagement um, actually seep into the way that we think about professional art making. Uh, and the invitation of uh, alumna and uh, alumni to speak about their experiences after they graduate, etc. So that students in the foundation year already start getting idea um, of uh, what one's career could look like. So these shapings and conversations and workshops actually make sure that uh, there is um, a core activity that all of us um, are experiencing at the same time, and also for peer-to-peer -peer understandings to take place. There is also the foundation show. This happens every April, usually sometime in the middle of it. And uh, what you would see upstairs right now are um, what would look like very, very blank walls. That's because the foundation show has just been deinstalled to make space for the coming of the grad show, which happens at the end of the fourth year. This is a specific kind of programming at Emily Carr, such that the raw energy and curiosity of first years are juxtaposed with the way in which we become educated, possibly disciplined, but hopefully disciplined in a way that also meets with critical introspection and some manner of resistance in years two, three, and four. And supporting all of this um, are two very, very crucial spaces in foundation. Um, you would uh, get a tour um, of our foundation area on uh, one floor, two floors up from here, um, which is where the foundation program office is. That is a welcoming hub where um, there's a lounge and um, our program um, officers actually answer questions, make sure that information is conveyed. The ways in which um, some of the challenges of moving from a secondary school system into a post-secondary school system, um, as well as the ways in which some of us might be entering into first year of Emily Carr, um, through plenty of work experience, right? So um, uh, this is a, a program office uh, that allows for that translation to take place. And alongside that, the foundation shop, where um, most foundation studio activities take place. And uh, I hope you get a chance to take a look at uh, the equipment that we have there and start imagining what you can do in there. Also, a quick word about our degree programs. Um, this is something that you may already be familiar with. At Emily Carr, we offer three degree streams, a bachelor in fine arts uh, with um, certain um, uh, major trajectories, um, a master, uh, bachelor's in design, and a bachelor in media arts. We also offer three minors that sit across different majors, if you will. One in art and text, um, another in curatorial practices, and one in social practice and community engagement. And uh, these are decisions that are usually made um, after some experience um, in one's major, and one starts uh, declaring one's minor or intention for a minor in year three. So uh, this happens usually in elective spaces um, within each degree. And um, our advising office, as well as our faculty mentors, would be able to chat through the different options, trajectories, as uh, they move and shift and grow. Speaking of social practice, um, this is a photograph taken from the grad show last year. Um, this is a student in industrial design who built um, a mechanism that then became a bit of a community movement at Emily Carr. Um, students wanting um, to speak to um, the sourcing 
of uh, our, the ingredients for food served on campus, as well as the ways in which the uh, cost of living is quite high in Vancouver. So how do students actually afford to eat healthily? So uh, the Social Practice Kitchen was born, and I'm very glad that um, uh, we are able to retain the um, structure built um, by uh, our student, uh, Joey, um, and which has been gifted um, to the university to continue this movement, entirely student-led. This is a photograph from our first multilingual week um, this academic year at the end of January, where um, it started with a dumpling-making workshop. The premise is that food is something that builds community, brings people together, and through that bringing together of differences, we're able to converse in a way that perhaps we wouldn't be able to in a classroom when we are being assessed and evaluated, perhaps, for the specificity of our argument and the ways in which we're able to manifest our understanding. But that tactile way of doing things and making things together is not dissimilar from what happens in a studio. How do we take it outside of a studio context, make it accessible, and feed each other, not just with food, but with ideas, with story, and uh, different types of uh, cultural interactions. So right back to cultures of community, moving together, if you will. These are some photographs um, from the um, installation period of our grad show last year. Um, so the white walls will soon be full um, of here, mostly two-dimensional work, but uh, certain uh, interaction, media, um, as well as performative um, celebrations also happen. This is a group of our animation students, I believe. Yes, and uh, the premise of culture and community as a whole um, of the university, as well as the faculty itself as the start of your university experience is very much premised on this kind of togetherness where we celebrate and support each other's failures, successes, as we journey into um, a world uh, that we can reimagine together and create together as we enter and leave Emily Carr. Thank you. Thank you, Sissy. So we're now going to welcome up our panel members. If you guys want to make your way up this way. We are going to um, now have um, a panel so, um, I, so that you guys can uh, ask questions. And um, I know Sissy's presentation always opens it up for uh, lots of interest and lots of um, questions. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, just introduce each of them to you by, in, by the way of asking a question to each of them. And then once uh, we do that, then uh, we'll open it up for um, the general for you, for you guys to ask questions. Um, Jeff and Laura, you were going to do the handheld mics? Perfect. Come on up to grab them if you want. So um, our first panel member here is uh, Dion Akiati. Dion is the Assistant Dean, Colonial Methodologies Foundation Faculty of Culture and Community. Uh, Dion has both teaching and art practices and has exhibited widely at galleries and film festivals across Canada and internationally. So Dion, can you explain how your art practice informs your teaching practice and vice versa? Sure. Um, so uh, what I have here is this picture of a work that is up right now in the streets of Vancouver, um, Non Serie in Commute, um, which is a project I was asked to do by the Contemporary Art Gallery um, to wrap a bus, to, to find a design to wrap a bus. And I think this piece is a good um, example of the way I think through work. One of the things that I'm really interested in is the history of images and how images have um, basically been a way that we learn about the world and into, um, to really study images and to critique them, copy them, reinvent them, and kind of think about how they impact how we relate to each other and how we understand each other. 
And so in this, um, in this piece, that's what I've done. I've looked through some archival images, um, particularly representations of my home country, Indonesia, and tried to rethink um, the problematic aspects of it. How that impacts my teaching is a lot of what I teach is in printmaking, which is about um, how images are copied and transferred and how images exist in the multiple, and thinking about why is it that we want to make something um, that exists in more than one. So why do you make a silk screen and have 100 posters? Like, what does a poster do that a drawing can't do? Um, what is a print um, that is in a newspaper? How can that uh, work differently than a painting on a wall? So I really think about how things circulate into the world. Um, another aspect that um, I bring from my practice to my teaching is just really thinking through materials. I really love to draw. I love to spend a lot of time with my work to really think through how the materials work um, and what meaning the material itself brings. And so that's something I do in my studio and that's something that I hope also happens in the studio classes that um, I work in. So um, in my own work, I look again at kind of at history, at images, at how images function. And then in the classroom, as people develop their own images and kind of think through how they want to navigate the world through images, I invite a lot of conversation about, well, what does this picture mean to you? Why are you using this color? Um, what does this color and this uh, image in combination together on top of a piece of wood mean? When it may be on top of a piece of paper, it might mean something different. So to really start to analyze and break down all these different aspects of the work. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, we will be, an op as I mentioned earlier, an opportunity to ask questions. So if uh, something's been twigged in you now, make sure that you write it down and you can ask the question after. Okay, our second panelist is Lemon Reimer. Lemon works in Emily Carr's Students uh, Union as chairperson and representative for the Faculty of Culture and Community. They recently completed their Bachelor of Design with a major in Interaction Design. So Lemon, can you tell us a bit about the support role of the Students Union? Sure, of course. Um, also, do we have the image or is it just oh, yes. the bus as the background? It is a really nice bus. I've seen it around and it's awesome. <laughs> okay, um, so you're asking me about the support role of the Students' Union? Please, yeah. Uh, wonderful. So, hi everyone, welcome. Um, I am a uh, member of the Students' Union as a student and also an elected representative of the Students' Union, someone who the students of this school, specifically the members of culture and community, elected to help me represent them and make decisions about how they interact with the school. Uh, as a Students' Union, student body, we exist as an organization separate from the school that exists within it. Our role is primarily member advocacy and support. A lot of that means that we do community building, we hold events like uh, free life drawing every week, we help support um, community food events, we provide support to all of the clubs, we help students carry out projects they'd like to do around the school, and we currently help support the social practice kitchen, you saw mentioned in Sissy's talk. We also do trauma-informed yoga and help mediate between the students and the school. Uh, Stephanie is actually not here as a member of the Students' Union, but is also an ex-member of the Students' Union. We oftentimes see that our members, um, both who are members of the students' body and also people who step up to be members of the board, tend to be very involved across the school and get a lot of really amazing things done. I don't think I have anything else to say about us. That's great. Good. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next, I would like to ask Janani Ramesh. Janani is a third-year Inter interaction design major who originated from, or you originally applied from China, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Okay, so is also an international student then. And Janani, can you tell us about your experience as an international student? Hi, everyone. Um, so, as Joni was saying, I applied from China. I used to live in India and in the Netherlands and then China, and now I'm finally here in Vancouver, and it's great. Um, so applying from there, it was very difficult because I had to look into housing, insurance, bank stuff, and being thrown into Vancouver all alone, knowing no one here, it was really challenging. I mean, I did my first tax return like two years ago, <laughs> and now I work for a tax company, which is weird as well. <laughs> so um, It's been really exciting, living in Vancouver especially, but... Also being thrown into Emily Carr all alone, I think foundation year really helps you build connections. Um, it was hard for me to make solid friends in first year, but definitely talk to everyone you can because everyone wants to go into different majors and it's so great knowing those people in illustration or painting when you're stuck in design for the next three years of your life. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I think 
Emily Carr really helps you come into Vancouver and not just the school. Uh, we have great housing options, we have counseling, um, and a lot of events and activities that'll help you make the friends you need to make. Yeah. Thanks, Janani. And this piece up here is, this is one that you've, your most recent piece? Yeah, so I made this in second year. I'm going into fourth year now. Oh. And, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, but basically, I'm in interaction design, so I look into services, health design, uh, coding, programming, things like that. And this particular piece, it's an Arduino piece. So it's a self-programmed watering system for plants. So when I go on holidays, my plants can basically monitor how much water they need and water themselves without me having to be there. So that's the kind of cool stuff we do. <laughs> yeah. Great idea. Thanks, Janani. Okay, so, and uh, Danielle Zandvliet. Danielle, on the end there, is one of our academic advisors who's been advising students at Emily Carr for 10 years now. Uh, Danielle's also interested in a variety of fiber arts, thus this beautiful image of a project she's working on now. Danielle, can you tell us about the services and support um, the academic advisors offer students? Um, hi. Yes. Um, we try to help you students uh, just basically navigate university, and whether that's um, understanding your degree requirements, understanding how to use the registration system, um, how to access painting classes as a design student, um, how to get any sort of help you might need, whether it's academic, um, mental health, or financial, yeah, all those th sort of things. <laughs> um, we also can help you, um, like maybe there's something you would like to study here, but you don't know how to, how to, where to look, or what subject that might be, if that course even exists or how to do it. We can help you try and figure that out. And um, we're kind of good for also, like if you have a question, you don't know where to get the answer. Where or who? Yeah, we do. They're great. They're wonderful. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, Stephanie. So Stephanie Broder, I mentioned earlier, is a fourth year illustration major. Stephanie's just completed her bachelor degree in fine arts and will be convocating next weekend. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I literally can't believe I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, can you speak a little about your student experiences now that you're on the, uh, now that you're graduating? Absolutely. Do you want to put my image up on the screen? Because oh, yes. that's Thank directly connected reminder. to my plans. So I spent my graduation year working on a long form narrative project, which culminated in this last semester that I wrote about 20,000 pages of my novel and illustrated it and created a book, which will be in the grad show next week. So that is where I'm going. I want to go into books, particularly comics or young adult writing. And I, this was just a, such a perfect place to experiment with it because I got a chance to play in creative writing as well as illustration. And my print media courses that I took on the side just really fostered that love of text and art together as well as how to actually make the physical object of a book. So, you know, just having that diverse experience was so valuable to go into this field. Um, and actually now I'm part of the curatorial committee for the grad show. So those blank walls that Sissy kept referencing were like haunting me as she was saying it. I was like, I know we're working on it. <laughs> so we're gonna be installing that next week and opening night for the show is on Friday. Um, I really encourage you to come. I went to the grad show as a student every year that I was at Emily Carr and every single year it just provided immense inspiration for me to see the work that's being produced here, to see what your soon-to-be classmates or I guess the alumni from your school, what, what are they producing? What's available? You know, what options are out there? And how much learning actually happens here? Like the difference between the work that I put in my portfolio, which I will not put on this screen, <laughs> versus what I'm doing now is night and day. And the grad show is where you can see that magic happen. Oh, wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay, Nick. 
So Nick Mann is just completing his first year and will be entering visual arts in the fall. Nick, can you tell us a little bit about your experience as a foundation student? Yeah, um, hi everybody. Uh, I was on the other side of this um, about a year ago. I was sitting somewhere around there. Um, yeah, my um, experience in foundation was absolutely not what I expected, um, but in the best possible way. I think uh, I've grown my own personal practice quite a bit. I came in um, as a painter, um, and you can see these are two of the um, uh, last pieces that I did for my, um, my core visual arts studio. Um, but I also ended up getting to explore a lot of different areas, including sculpture um, and most recently ceramics with uh, the electives in, that you'll take in second semester. Um, and I really fell in love with it. I came in, I remember the day that I was here, um, I went on a tour and I saw the ceramic studio. I'm like, oh, that's cool, but I'll never touch any clay. It has, it's real boring. And now I'm like in love with mugs and glazes. So you never know what, uh, what you're gonna go into or where you're gonna uh, be taken. Uh, going back to what Sissy was talking about earlier, I think the best part about Emily Carr that I've experienced so far is really the community and the culture and the family that you make here. Um, at least for my experience, um, I feel like I have been part of a, a movement that I wasn't part of before. I feel like I'm part of a family that I wasn't part of before and I'm part of um, something that feels important to me um, and to the other people in it. So yeah, it's been, it's been pretty good. Great, thanks. Thank you, Nick, for sharing that. Okay, so now we'd love to open it up to any of you who have any questions at all. For It could be a general question or it could be um, for uh, specific. Um, we'll just keep in mind that we'll give you the mic so that our viewers at home, we haven't forgotten you guys, so that our viewers at home can um, hear the question as well. Okay. Any second now, someone's hand is going to pop up. There's a question over there. I'm curious to know about the transition from foundation year to the next year, uh, how you pick your major or your specific genre. Is it up to you or are you guided or do you get a say or are you just sort of uh, thrown into what you do well at? I can speak. <laughs> um, so I just recently did this uh, in March. Um, my understanding is there's certain majors um, and certain degrees that are a little bit more limited in space. Um, I'm in the visual arts major, which I was told, I don't know how accurate this information is, but basically every time I ask somebody, they're like, don't worry, you're gonna get into visual arts, no problem. So if you're, if you're out there and you're wanting to get into visual arts, don't worry about it, you're all good. Um, there's some, from my understanding, there are some majors such as industrial design and animation, and I believe illustration's getting pretty hard to get into um, now as well, just because there's a lot of interest in there, but limited spots. Um, so then it's choosing GPA, yeah, um, by the GPA of your first year. Um, I don't know if anybody else has more you information. Three choices as well? Yeah, yeah, I re you wrote three choices. Sorry, I should have said that into a mic instead of just like shouting it at him, but you get your three top choices. So, you know, my first choice was illustration. I got in, fortunately, but my second choice was animation, which is a lot of overlap in terms of areas of study and character design and drawing and storyboarding. Um, so yeah, it's about thinking strategically about if you happen to not get your first choice, uh, what's something that can meet some of those same goals for you? Also, additionally, I hear a lot of especially stirrings among foundation students being worried that they might not get into their specific major. It has been noted that some majors are harder than others to get into. Every year, this changes a little bit. So there's not like the major for the kids who have high GPAs because every year people want different things. And some years, for some reason, everyone wants to go into drawing. And some years, everyone wants to go into industrial design. And some years, um, illustration is everyone's like top pick, like the cream of the crop. And that'll just shift a bit, so try not to worry about it that much. I don't know anyone who like, didn't get into a major they didn't, they didn't, or they, who got into a major they didn't want and really hated what happened. Mm -hmm. Everyone will get into something you want. And if not, you can always take crossover courses too, so not something to worry about. Throughout the um, year as well, at Foundation Forum, they will have a series of talks ab about each major. Faculty from each of those uh, majors will come to speak to the each area to help you 
well before you you have to make the decision. And um, and so ultimately it is up to you, you which one you want to apply for. And although there's all the talk about oh the GPA to get into the limited program, majority of people get what they want. Not end up in anything like who are guaranteed to get in. I feel like, you know, you're going to go to foundation and then you have to reapply to enter into, does, does that make sense? Am I making sense? We don't have an undeclared category. No. So I'm coming at this as a mature student. I spent, well, I'm, I'm 43 years old and I know I want to do industrial design how, like, I don't want to do anything else, basically. I want to learn other aspects of art and design, but my goal is industrial design. So how do I, how am I guaranteed that I'm going to study industrial design here? Because that's really the only reason I'm here. I am a mature student as well. I actually have a degree already from UBC, so welcome. You will not feel out of place here. <laughs> um, there is no guarantee, but don't worry about it. Like. Uh, Lemon made this comment already that I don't know anybody who didn't get their choice and who suffered for it. You also will not be the oldest student in industrial design. Um, we have quite a few mature students. A lot of people realize later in life, especially at the midpoint in their career, that actually art or design is the space they um, really need to th thrive in my major specifically. We have a lot of people who especially come from uh, science, specifically biology, and the age range of my major goes anywhere from like new students coming in at 19 to people who are almost in their 30s at this point. And that's very pervasive. And I would say we have a younger, like a younger age cap on my major. I say age cap, we don't not let in people over a certain age. Okay, well that's good. Sorry. Because I'm <laughs> over 30. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't discriminate. But yeah, like I just coming in as an adult, and, you know, like, I'm not going to lie, the price of living in Vancouver is extremely high. That's what probably scares me more than the tuition, is the cost of living in Vancouver. I'm from the Okanagan, but to consider rents and everything, as an adult, you know, like, I'm not, you know, going to live in a dorm or a, you know, I've, I've grown beyond those years. So, I guess it's a big investment for myself to come down here for a year and take a bunch, and you know, like you say, there's no, like there's, you're pretty much guaranteed, but you're not guaranteed. I guess I'm just trying to really decipher that in my decision making on whether or not I come here. I think, yeah, if I may just speak a little bit to um, how the curriculum also unfolds in the first year. Um, um, as Sissy pointed out, there's the um, interdisciplinary core studio in the fall and then the kind of, um, uh, discipline specific core studio in the spring and with interdisciplinary core studio it's taught by a range of practitioners so we do have industrial designers teaching in that uh, course we have communication designers we have animators we have visual artists um, filmmakers sound designers um, and so one of the things that would um, uh, be I think useful for somebody who already knows specifically what they want is to research the faculty once the faculty have been um, when you do the registration to see what their area of focus is and then even though in the first year you are um, going to be exposed to a whole wide range of experiences and materials and methods. Um, each of us teaches that course with our particular kind of inflection to it. Um, and so um, I think one thing that um, I often hear from students who are really um, kind of focused already in the, um, as they enter is that, well, when do I get to take this class? And actually it's all, all those disciplines are already present in the first year. It's kind of looking through where the faculty are and um, what particular inflection um, that you want your courses to be. Um, so within that, you'll learn the 2D and the 3D and the time-based work, um, but it might be a discourse that um, is more design-inflected or a discourse that's more performance-inflected, for instance, depending on the faculty that you work with. Uh, your best way of guaranteeing is to keep your GPA as high as possible. Um, I'm just wondering about the majors. If you're really, really interested in something like the social practice one and all your artwork kind of relates to it, is there 
possible to just kind of explore it at an early time in your education? I would say that in um, in most of the studio classes in foundation year, there's um, there's certainly some technical goals that we're trying to uh, prepare everybody with, like how to use how to use the shop, how to access the facilities, how to work with material. But within almost each project, there's an openness towards how you approach um, the assignment. So um, within um, a foundation, even within a like something that seems like a, say a drawing class, there's no reason why a project could not involve the social or involve kind of community practice in some way. Uh, similarly, in creative process, um, the, the way the faculty teach it, um, there's some faculty that are really um, invested in community engagement uh, in those classes. There are some that are very performative. And again, there's, um, a, with almost everything that one does in an art and design context, is kind of trying to figure out your own inflection onto what the assignment is and how to make how to meet the learning goals while still kind of exploring the ideas, philosophies, and theories that you're interested in. You also asked specifically about social practice. Okay, as Sissy mentioned, we have a minor called Social Practice and Community Engagement. I have this minor, it's very popular within my program. Um, and I took it and it, I find that it really augments my work whether I'm doing like a time-based, um, I would say like more participatory work or whether I'm doing like an app design. Like I still can find ways to put social practice into that. We don't have a social practice major, but you can take a social practice minor and it really weaves its way into everything you do. And I find that a lot of the time people who take a space minor as we call it, produce some very, very interesting work that permeates beautifully into their majors. I have a question about the registration aspect of the foundation year. Uh, typically, I've heard, especially with my older two, when they go to register for classes in their first year, there, there seems to be a little bit of a race in terms of getting the proper scheduling. Are, are the foundational year the students preset, or is there a pre-schedule for them so that they're not trying to miss out on a particular class or all set up? Uh, there is not a, a single um, package to register in. You, uh, students do have to select one of each of the three required classes. Uh, but typically, not everyone wants the exact same thing. Yes, it does seem like a race and a bit of a panic, but there, um, every, there's definitely enough classes for everybody. I will say, as somebody that was just registering, um, while, yeah, there, there's going to be space for everybody, um, depending on how fast your internet is, and if you want to get up right when it um, when the clock ticks over, you may or may not get the times that you want. Um, I got classes that I didn't want the times on, but then I ended up meeting new friends in there. Um, so you will get into the, all the classes that you need to be in. It's just um, if it's the, with the section of the professor that you want or the, the time that you want. Um, it really, it's kind of, that's kind of like shooting a fish in a barrel there, so. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I'm wondering whether, um, and for everybody across the ether, um, this is Sissy again. I just want to um, speak to that question about uh, interests that fall outside of a major that is already defined. Um, as you would have heard uh, Danielle and Nick and everybody on the panel mention, there are majors um, that have fewer seats, but sometimes it's less about the seats, um, more about the structure of the program itself and therefore the way in which uh, the university is able to offer um, more sections or not. So in the case of students already interested in social practice um, with or without community engagement, um, I should mention that there are studio courses um, on community projects. This is kind of an exciting space and it starts in year two, mainly because first year students get a sense of the different practices that could take place and therefore how you engage um, in community, how you think about the social, will always be through the practice that you have already experienced in order to grow in that practice, blend different practices, etc. So uh, addressing your question directly, um, there are courses, there are majors that allow for more flexibility. As Nick mentioned, visual arts, it's not so much that it's easy to get in, it has a lot of flexibility. So whether Nick wants to pursue painting and ceramics at the same time, or painting ceramics and social practice at the same time, that is a major that allows for that breadth. Um, and I mentioned also the critical and cultural practices major, which is um, a sliver 
of the BFA. That is for students who also want to integrate, say, writing practices. And uh, at Emily Carr, writing is recognized as a critical and creative practice. We don't make that distinction. So uh, if you uh, want to um, think of um, your practice through words um, and the way that writing co uh, sits alongside drawing or scripting in space as choreography, Right. Um, these are the different ways in which you choose the courses um, in accordance sometimes um, with the advice and the mentorship um, of our academic advisors and um, of our faculty. Then you really chart your own path. And I should also mention for those of us who haven't made up our minds as to exactly what it is that we wish to pursue at Emily Carr, there is also flexibility um, for, to allow for um, movement from one major to the other depending on the requirements of each major. So um, if you are undecided yet and you are interdisciplinary in nature, in the way that you think, you might want to choose a more flexible um, degree. I'll just um, add. Sorry, oh. I was just gonna say, we only have time for one more question now. So is, any, is there one more question or? Right there, great. Jeff, are you able to, or Laura? Run for it, let's see who gets there first. Thank you. Um, I think as a parent, and I was here for the open house that you did before, and so one of the things that I noticed on the tour that I thought was really good was the emphasis on like on the supportive kind of environment, and I've heard that from the students, which is really, you know, helpful. And so I'm just wondering, like, I thought it was great that you introduced there's a counselor on site. So I'm just curious, like, as a count as a counselor, and what what have you seen as one of the like some of the major challenges for the students in foundation year like as a as a parent and as a member of a family what what also can we do you know to support um our children in that um great question because i think as a parent you do worry and students adjusting to a new environment so a lot of times we do hear loneliness or feeling the stress of being competitive it is a supportive environment at the same time, people want to create and be very engaged in the community. So there's that pressure to perform. So in that sense, we do experience students with anxiety or people who feel, I think, when they talk about um, resiliency, building that resiliency and you know, learning about failure and how to actually circumvent it and become a different person evolving that's where I see, personally, in my sessions, working with the students. Okay, well, thank you very much for this, all of you. We are going to have booths. Uh, afterwards, I'll tell you where that's going to be. So if there's any other questions that you have for um, any of the uh, other staff or faculty that are here, you can ask them uh, then one-on-one -on -one as well. Thank you so much, all. So now I would like to properly introduce you and welcome to the stage um, Avalon Mott. Avalon is our Director of Recruitment, Admissions and International Development. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Joni, for the introduction and to all the faculty, staff, and students who have helped to make this such a wonderful evening. For those of you who I've had the pleasure of meeting before, it is great to see you here again on campus. And for those of you who I've yet to meet, welcome. I look forward to speaking with you further. And hello to everyone joining us virtually from around the world. For those of you who haven't uh, quite clued in yet, we are live streaming this event. Um, so students who we have accepted from countries all over the world are able to join us this evening. So we've talked tonight a lot about the year ahead. But what I'd like to invite you to do is to take a moment, close your eyes, and imagine yourself in four years at the opening of your degree exhibition. And open your eyes now. 
Much like the Foundation Show, the degree exhibition which we have named this show is in recognition of yourselves as accomplished artists, designers, and media practitioners who use artistic skill and conceptual rigor to challenge and explore the world of art, design, and media. The show spans all four floors of our campus and provides an opportunity for all graduating students to showcase a work that reflects the culmination of exploration, play, and creative development that took place as part of their degree at Emily Carr. The show has become a yearly highlight for the creative industries in Vancouver as it provides an opportunity for interactions with an elite group of emerging creative professionals, our graduating class. But is it also a space for celebration, celebration of community, friendships, life experiences, and creative development? You'll notice today, as people have mentioned, that most of the walls in our campus are bare or in transition, but they are charged with anticipation of this year's show, which will begin install on Monday. And I would invite you back next Friday evening from 5 to 10 p.m. for the opening of the show 2019. Today you are here because we think that you will thrive with us. You will be able to explore yourselves as creatives in ways that you can't even imagine yet. We believe that we are the right fit for you. And we want you to join our Emily Carr community, not just as undergraduate students, but as alumni. This is a lifelong club. Many of us today here as staff and faculty are Emily Carr alumni, myself included, and we would be happy to talk to you about our experiences. I think I can speak for all of us when I say that we cannot wait to see what you create for the show 2023 as you graduate from Emily Carr University of Art and Design. And what I'd like to share with you now in closing is uh, a demo reel from all of our graduating animation 2D, animation 3D, um, and film and screen art majors, so you, you can get a taste for some of the type of work that's created here at Emily Carr. Congratulations and welcome. Okay, so that's us finished. Uh, one more thing, uh, oftentimes uh, when we finish this, your, uh, your question is, what's next? What, uh, what's my next step? So uh, in order to accept your offer um, and become a student, you just need to pay your deposit. Uh, this is a non-refundable payment, and the deadline, of course, is May 1st, 2019. Um, this link right here, if you want to either take a photo of that or write it down. This is a link that gives you all of the steps on how to do so. Okay. Um, and that's it. So we're now going to offer you one of two things, or both if you're interested. We're going to be offering tours um, of the... Um, first, second, and third floors of the university. Uh, the fourth floor is right now being spit polished and cleaned up for the grad show, so um, it might, you might get wet if you <laughs> go up there, so we're going to uh, just do the first three floors. 
Um, so if you're interested in um, taking part of, in a tour, um, we're going to ask you to exit through the doors here and just go straight up the stairs. Kurt is right here and Jeff is right here. They're both going to be setting you up in tours. And um, so if that's what you're interested in, um, then the other thing we're going to be doing is we have booths upstairs. And I had mentioned that earlier where many of our faculty and staff are um, a, um, attending these booths. Um, and that's going to be, again, out this door, up the stairs, and just to your left. There will be uh, staff up there directing you to where the Re uh, Rennie Hall is. And there will be all the booths set up there. Okay, these will be opened until about 6.45, so you're welcome to go up there and speak with some of our faculty and staff. Okay, thanks again very much for coming. So those of you who are interested in tours, again, up the stairs.